Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and before I get going, I want to show you these these um these guys on Link to are the the private equity like Ripple and Uphold and Kraken and Link to the blockchain related things. Um, they they have kept putting them back up there, and these things are um, people. I think people kind of realize, and and here's the way I see this whole industry. If if I haven't said it, I've probably said it before. But here's what I think is going is going to happen back. If you remember those of you that were around back during the dot com boom, we had a a true boom in in um, in the IPOs uh, IPOs around uh, dot com and all that. Now that that time was different in that a lot of these companies that were going IPO were were in just debt machines and there the idea was that they would go IPO and then some time in the future they would make money. Blockchain's different. This time these companies are companies that are making money hand over fist and then are headed towards doing IPOs or being bought and those type of things. And that's why I'm not just excited about the digital assets like I am about XRP and those kind of things, but I'm also very excited about the private equity side of things and what else is really cool that that i think is going to happen with all of this and for those of you that don't know through the link to platform if you have an uphold account they also give you the ability to buy the, the equity with your digital assets so let's say you had um let's say you had you were accredited and you had ten thousand dollars worth of bitcoin that you wanted to buy ripple equity with you can do that if you've got a link to account and you got an uphold account. So um, this, and, and as these prices rise, I mean, there's a lot of people right now that think that um, that Bitcoin and Ethereum and some of these have gotten, you know, they've gone through a bull run and they're, and they're getting pretty high and all that. So some of the thought patterns are out there to, to go and, and, and roll some of that into things like private equity if you're accredited. Well, this is a way to do it. These guys are democratizing private equity. Traditionally, the only people that could even get into this kind of stuff, they had to have $250,000. This way, you can do it with as little as $10,000, but you do have to be accredited, and you have to check with them on that. Okay, enough on that, but I, I, I want to keep reiterating how exciting I am about that opportunity because I'm taking advantage of it myself. Okay, now this guy right here has... has Eight million fo followers. I don't even know who he is. He's a professional cricket player. He's Ab de Villiers. Okay. Now listen to what he says here. Great what what, he, what he's team. doing in in this clip is he's showing a clip of um of uh, blockchain backers video that I told you about the other day. That's so good. Listen to what he what the, this section of it that he's putting Great up. Trans and and look, he says. How Ripple XRP is not in the top three at the moment is difficult to understand. And please note, I'm not punning anything here. I'm really trying to understand the reason behind it all. With these numbers, how? And I said, I can tell you. A years-long concerted effort by media, regulators, industry participants to keep it from being number one. We have the names. We have the timeline. We have it all. And we're not done yet. And that's the truth. So, and we'll, I'm going to cover some of this today. Watch. Current transaction fee for Ethereum is $6.49. And during peak time periods, like the bullish time period of the cryptocurrency market in April and in May, it would cost $24, $65, $71 to send any amount of Ethereum. If you wanted to send your buddy $100, or if you wanted to pay for something, it would cost you $71 in a transaction fee to send $100, leaving you with $28.28 .28 remaining. Even if you just Google Ethereum average transaction fee, the average fee is $51.45 to send any amount of Ethereum. We can see the Bitcoin average transaction fee today is $3.70 to send any amount of Bitcoin. How about during the peak time period back in April of the 
this year. $62.79 to send any amount of Bitcoin. If you wanted to send $5 somewhere, it would cost you $62. <laughs> but XRP, sitting in the number three position, the biggest threat to number one and number two has a transaction fee of 0 0.0002 per transaction. All right, it's very obvious, folks. Now, when you're listening to me talk about this topic and, and how I believe that media regulators and industry participants have kept, have intentionally, in a coordinated fashion, tried to keep this down, you can call that conspiracy or whatever you want to call it. But I can tell you this. <coughs> I've been here for since 2013. I've been following this stuff, and I've really been following it for the last three or four years. And I can show it to you, and I'm about to. Don't, don't, you don't have to take my word for it. Just watch what, what has unfolded, okay? Um, and there's, let's see, let me make sure I got this in. Now, I wanted to show you what is going on underneath this guy's tweet. He's got 80 million followers. So, first thing I did is I, I said, this should enlighten you. I wanted to show him the video we've shown many times where Tim Draper is schooling Gary Gensler in how the, the, the Wall Street machine goes about trying to keep uh, disruptors such as a ripple from getting any traction and he says it's not his not my words his words he says that first they they sue you they try to sue you then they try to get their media people after you then they try to get their government buddies after you all of which I have witnessed done to ripple all of it okay then you got John Deaton coming in here and he's giving this guy his explainer video. Then he's giving him the timeline and he's and I love how John says these are fa these are the facts and they are not in dispute. So this guy hopefully will be with his 80 million followers will quickly be brought up to speed so we can make even more people aware of what has gone on. Now, um, remember and and remember and I wanted to show this clip briefly because this is Stephen Naryoff, and I, I, I said here, I'm learning that the Ethereum founders do not want to claim Stephen Naryoff as a co-founder, which intrigues me all the more. This is from July 27th, which would be a month after the Ethereum free pass. This guy is the guy who, um, who before the Ethereum pre-sale, worked it out, and we've got the video. He, he, he was indirectly in contact with the SEC, and they were talking about how they loved the idea of selling Ethereum as a product sale, you, you know, word games, so that they could not go after it. In other words, the SEC was involved from the beginning. Listen to his words. Here we go. Right here. Uh, a technology similar to Bitcoin, it's both a blockchain technology, it's what's called Ethereum. Uh, uh, we, I came up with a structure on the legal side in terms of how to do the offering because we were selling, uh, uh, they were called tokens, we were mm -hmm. selling similar to Bitcoin as a token, this one is called Ether, it's another token, mm -hmm. and it's something of value. And people contributed to this by paying money, and we had to find a legal way of making that happen. Uh, so. That with some words, uh, we, we got a law firm, a really prominent law firm, to give us an opinion uh, that that was a kosher transaction. That uh, they looked, they worked very diligently to make sure over many months that there were other countries that were looking for laws so they could move their, their they were wanted to move very fast and capture this technology and capture the industry. Switzerland was one of those, and so the, the Swiss. Uh, legal framework folks wanted needed some legal precedent in other country frankly there just wasn't any there wasn't any so what they were able to do was to take the opinion letter that uh, i put together with the law firm and use that as a legal precedent that's unusual <laughs> okay now um this clip right here bothers me okay i played it for you yesterday it's worth playing again it's this is mike novogratz okay this clip bothers me, and the reason it bothers me is because I'm sitting there, you know, we've got this brand new cryptocurrency space. This guy's a Ripple equity investor, early Ripple investor. But the reason this, this clip bothers me is in this burgeoning brand new space, I'm sitting there just thinking to myself as I'm listening to it, who even thinks <clears throat> with, with this burgeoning industry <clears throat> that where you've got all these new things, who even thinks about going short anything? I mean, really, the only 
natural thought pattern unless you're unless something else is going on is that you're these are this is this new new thing and so you're long these new new things and you and you go long several of them because you don't know which one meanwhile this guy's going short and it just doesn't really add up to me and the regulators got worried i mean it was interesting cnbc not to pick on cnbc but i think i can them here they literally had a show where they were one by one walking people through how to buy the ripple the xrp coin literally when it was trading at three dollars and twenty cents having moved from twenty cents eight weeks earlier from the day of that show the thing plummeted uh we were short uh, it plummeted uh, all the way back to 50 cents here's my and question there's got okay worried. i mean it was Let, let's assume that he just saw irrational exuberance and said i want to go short well there's been tons of irrational exuberance with bitcoin and ethereum at different times just like all the others I've never seen the guy. Maybe he did. Maybe I missed it. Why is he not going on shows saying, "Well, I'm, I was short Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I was. I went short Ethereum. <laughs> you know, I knew it was going to get. Why didn't he? Why? Why not? Why not ever go out and talk about how he, there was a time when he shorted that? If he plays both sides of the market, why didn't he do that? I've never seen it. If you've seen it, show it to me. I'd like to see it. I don't remember him doing it. Now. Here's the other thing. Now, I was there. I remember. I li literally re remember looking at my phone when this happened. This is January 8, 2018. XRP had gotten an all-time high, and here's what happens. Coin market cap out of nowhere, folks. Out of nowhere. This morning, we excluded some Korean exchanges and price calculations due to the extreme divergence in prices from the, the rest of the world and limited arbitrage opportunity. We are working on better tools to provide users with the averages that are most relevant to them. Now, here's the reason this was so bad. It's because at the time, that area of the world is where most of the volume was coming for XRP specifically. That's the reason that this has always bothered me. But see, it bothered me back then, and it bothered me for the last two or three years. But it really bothers me now that I know, now that I have a, now that we have a timeline and we know who's involved and what, and we know about the Ethereum free pass, and now we see the, the Ripple get sued by the SEC while all these other guys are given a free pass. Now, I'm really locked on to it. And I was thinking about it yesterday. And, and what also j just makes me look at it like this is that Mike Novogratz is bragging about shorting XRP at around the same time as this happened, which makes my red flags go up. And this was an article on it at the time, January 9th. Because remember, if you look, I put it, Let's see, I had it. Where did I put it? I think I put it way over here. One second. I'm getting to it. One second. Right here. So here's why, here's why it bothers me. Mike Novogratz in that clip referenced, he referenced the CNBC running the how to buy Ripple on their channel. And I think I've narrowed this down to a time, okay? On the 5th, of, of January 2018 is when I found I found a video, uh, the video of, of Ripple, uh, of CNBC explaining how to buy Ripple. So Mike Novogratz was short during that time, okay? When they, when they, when they did this right here, he told you in the video that he's short. It was, it was three days after they ran this that CoinMarketCap just happens without any warning excluding those Korean exchanges where most of the XRP volume was. So I put this little video together because the other interesting part of this, folks, is that the coin market cap founder, his name is Brandon Chez, has remained anonymous. Now we know who he is, we know what he looks like, there's a little bit of information on him, but he's tried his best to remain anonymous to this extent. How this all happened. So please give a big applause for Brandon. And by the way, we know he's out of New York City, okay? Same place that Wall Street is. Hey everyone, welcome to the Capitol, CoinMarketCap's very first crypto conference. I'm Brandon, the founder of CoinMarketCap. 
Today we have a very special guest to kick off. Okay, so this is the extent that this guy is going to to keep his identity a secret. Okay, and then I've gone through this, showed you what happened with Coin Market Cap. Now. When Coin Market Cap did that, there was an attempt to unveil uh, the Coin Market Cap founder by Paul Vigna. Okay, this was a Wall Street Journal article. The programmer at the center of the of a 100 billion dollar crypto storm. How a top source of Bitcoin data contributed to a sudden plunge in digital currencies. Yes, a lot of them were affected, but XRP was the one that more than any where the the stuff was the the volume was coming out of Korea. Now. Then there was, and, and I also want to show you this because this is an article from January 5th on Coindesk. Okay, and remember, Coindesk, Coindesk is owned by the Digital Currency Group, which is Barry Silbert. And remember, we know because Barry Silbert for the last few years has said that, oh, well, XRP is not on our conviction list yet. And all he talks about is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything, just about every token that, that the guy's been bullish on has been a, an Ethereum-based token, like Decentraland, the Mana token, and all these. Also, Zcash was one of his, okay? But he, oh, we're just, XRP is just not on our conviction list yet, okay? These got Coindesk has been pro Bitcoin Ethereum right there along with everybody. Okay, so these are the type articles that were floating out. That, remember, this is January fifth. This is before Coin Market Cap did that to the South. To took the South Korean exchanges out. But these were the type articles being written. Hundred billion dollar controversy. In other words, you're not seeing them writing articles about Bitcoin or, or Ethereum when there's a when there. I thought somebody was screaming, but it was the, it was like the pipes or something. <laughs> Sorry, um, you're not here. You don't see articles coming out on CoinDesk. Oh, big controversy, Bitcoin going up, but huge controversy, Ethereum going up. But you see it with Ripple. Okay, it wasn't one. It's not one thing. But then if if you look look who's retweeting this out. These this is Michael J. Casey, and where's Michael J. Casey from? Well, he was at the MIT Media Lab. And the, if you go down this thread, it, it's it got some of the most famous name, Bitcoin maxi names that you can see, and they're all trying to make, Nathaniel Popper, they're all trying to make issue of this article. And the reason they're trying to make issue is because they all hate Ripple, all of them, and they know it. So this is the, this is the article. Then you got this, okay? This is January 4th, right here. Now, remember, Mike Novogratz said in that video that he was short, okay, the, 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 um, let's go back to the video. He said he was, he was short, uh, um, this is what I'm trying to show you, right here. On, on the 5th of, look, on the 5th, when, when CNBC runs how to buy Ripple, he said he was short. On that day, he said he was short. So let's look at this. The day before that, he's tweeted. Now remember, he's got over, I mean, I don't know how many followers he had at the time, but he's got a large following and he's a big figure in crypto. On the 4th, which is the day before, before CNBC ran, ran that thing, he's putting this out. Total XRP now worth 380 billion makes Ripple Labs worth 225 billion. Tenth largest company by market cap in the world makes Chris Larson worth 55 billion, tying Mark Zuckerberg at the fifth richest man in the world. Okay, then he's he's trying. So so basically he's he's trying to float out this thing that this doesn't make any sense. Meanwhile, he's told you that as of January 5th he is short XRP. So what is he doing right here with this tweet? That's my question, okay? Now, there's another thing, and I wish I had pulled it up, but I didn't. Let me see if I can, at the same time, somewhere in here, and I'll have to look it up, but at the same time, Laura Shin wrote an article, who's also a Bitcoin, Ethereum maxi, she wrote an article about how rich Chris Larson was. And I, and I, I swear, don't quote me, but I think it was right around this same time, okay? Then, We've got this. We're back to Brandon Chez. I've tried to lay all this stuff out as best I could. Who's Brandon Chez and who and who are his friends? 
Well, this is from that Wall Street Journal article, and I th this is the part that drew my attention. According to an earlier version of his LinkedIn profile, which has since been altered, what's he altering his LinkedIn profile for while this guy from the Wall Street Journal is looking into him? Then there was this, okay? Saffron Finance announced that a number of strategic partners will join the Saffron ecosystem, including Multicoin Capital, Coinbase Ventures, DeFi Holdings, and famous angel investors Melton, Melton Demure's Brandon Chez. Well, and then these people. Now this name jumps out at me. You know why? Do you remember? I do. Remember when, when all of a sudden the truth about Bitcoin and its energy wasting proof of work started to hit the mainstream media and Barry Silbert tweeted out, he says something to the effect of, what if I told you that um, there was one company behind all of this energy FUD? And he called it energy FUD, which is actually not true because proof of work is an energy wasting technology, okay? Well, Melton, Melton Demure's um, is the one that replied to his tweet and said it said something to the effect of, well, I'll give you a hint, it starts with an R and ends in an L-E or something like that. And I remember that because Brad Garlinghouse took issue with her when she tweeted it, okay? So there's that, all right? Um, I've already played that for you. Let's see, this is Brandon, Ch this is like a video of him that somebody dropped below my video. This is a, a video of Brandon Chez when he was, I think it's before coin market cap ever happened. He's the guy here on the left. But I just think that this guy, when he, he literally caused, when he did that, he caused billions of dollars in, in losses overnight in XRP, as I recall. And I just don't think that somebody with that kind of responsibility should be allowed to be anonymous. Somebody should have a microphone in this guy's face asking him questions. Who who do you know? Who are you in business with? What was what was your thinking that day? Nobody ever asked him anything to my knowledge. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm That's Andrew. Him. And we're gonna to talk to you about our new project called GameSto. We all know that losing game saves and progress can be real. It's not important that you see this video. I just wanted you to show show you who the guy is. Okay? And look, I'm not I'm not I'm not doxing anybody. This stuff was out on the internet. The guy that the the guy that wrote the Wall Street Journal piece, they accused him the Paul Vigna guy, they accused him of doxing the guy. But bottom line is the guy's already out there, but when you're when against the reason I'm bringing this back up is that now I've seen it all, folks. I when you when, when, when you were there, when this first happened back in 2018, you're like, oh man, why'd they do that? That was more your, but against the backdrop of what I've seen over the last three years and the, the concerted effort and the drumbeat of this constant, anytime, anytime the XRP price goes up, I see somebody come, one of these maxis come out or there's an article or there's this, and it's been constant against Ripple over and over and over. You know, at some point, it is what it is, folks, and, you, and, you, and it's very obvious. Now, and I wanted to make this point, Bitcoin, the number one crypto creator anonymous, number one crypto, Coin Market Cap, the number one site for displaying crypto prices and aggregating them, the creator's anonymous. I'm 47, I've never seen this in any industry at any time in all my years. What's even more bizarre is that nobody seems to want to know why. Okay, now then there's this, folks, because this, remember, remember what Mike Novogratz said, folks, okay, because the video I'm about to show you was on the same day that CoinMarketCap did what they did. So on the same day, see, I believe that CNBC back then when they were doing the how to buy Ripple, I believe that was before CNBC was told, hey, you're not going to promote this Ripple thing anymore because trust you me, ever since then they don't. I believe at some point, somewhere around this time when XRP hit its all time high and all this was going down, this was a totally different CNBC from back then to what you see now. And it's, and it's been, it's, you've, you can, you can see it. it it's been a concerted effort and it's a multi-pronged effort to promote only Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it's been since January of 2018. I want you to I want you to watch this video 
And I, I think that the, what, what CNBC was doing is what triggered whoever it is that's, that's, and I'm not saying any names in particular, but whoever it is that's been b behind, it's never made any sense because Bitcoin, because proof of work doesn't work, folks, okay? It's never made any sense, which means that it's been a concerted effort, okay? And I want you to watch this video. This is what CNBC, CNBC was saying what you and I know about Ripple back then, is how it, it makes more sense than any of them. They were saying it. But this is around the time that, I don't know who, but these guys were shut down and they haven't been, te they haven't been telling it like it is ever since. But this is what CNBC was saying on January 8th of 2018. R last year, Ripple saw gains of 36,000%. Folks, I was there. I saw it. <sighs> but this, see... This was back when the traditional financial media was telling the truth. You don't see the truth in not now, but these guys where it involves Ripple and XRP, you don't see the truth anymore. When they were telling you how to buy Ripple, that's when they were telling you the truth. And then that's when all the bad guys, I don't know who the bad guys are specifically, but that's when they all started coming in. That's when this whole thing started. But listen, I'm, I'm confident that uh, good prevails over bad uh, and, and the truth always eventually rises to the top. I think we're going to see truth before this is over because lies don't stand the test of time. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that lies just don't stand the test.